Volkswagen has just shot itself fair in the... in the Brazilian this time. They're so freaking smooth. Such a below-the-belt car maker. The world's largest automotive criminal conspiracy has just been independently awarded a big fat zero stars on safety for its latest death trap EV. I'm John Cadogan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. Australia only though. Website. Card. Now, I can't work out if this is the saddest story I've ever ever covered, or one of the most hilarious, or perhaps it's both, because satire is a bit like that. i got to say, though, it is pretty sad when you think about the full human scale implications of these kinds of corporate decisions. So we'll get into that in a second. I promise we'll have some laughs along the way, although (laughs) sitting here in this seat, that is something of a technical challenge, I must say. Before that, though, I wanted to remind you that there is a Bluetti sale on right now until Saturday, the 31st of December, New Year's Eve, and you'll get discounts of up to 22%. I'll put some links in the description, and if you're not familiar with Bluetti, just think battery in a box with an inverter and a variety of power out options, including 12 volt DC and USB A and USB C and inductive charge pad on top. But the party trick, of course, with the inverter is 240 volts pure sine wave power, just like out of the power point at home. So if you don't want to hardwire a 12 volt dual battery setup into your SUV, then, or your ute, maybe this is a good alternative, right? Because you can take it from your ute to your van, to your camper trailer, to a different vehicle, and even into a boat, and you've got the one device that's portable power everywhere. You can use it for camping, and you can use it for going off grid if you've got a shed up the back or something. And in the extremis, if you buy one of the big ones, you can also use it for home battery backup, which Blue Eddy does in a pretty clever modular way. I've used the products, they've been reliable for me, and I've got essentially nothing but praise for them, although I'd have to say, if you're looking at running heavy industrial single phase machinery they will struggle with some of those kinds of applications because it's just a little bit more than they were ever designed to do if you just want to run domestic appliances like fridges and things of that nature all good anyway i'll put some links to some products that might reflect the kinds of things you're interested in if you're inclined in that way but now let us go back to the story and i'd have to say that perhaps you've been enjoying in the Aussie tradition a bit of a VB induced coma to celebrate the anniversary of the birth of Christ which is after all our cultural tradition here in Australia and if you did that you probably missed the full Brazilian crash test results released recently by Latin NCAP and I'd have to say dude if you haven't been to a full Brazilian crash test you're missing out So make it a bit of a priority. They're my favourite kind. They're so freaking smooth. I don't know why. Still, pubic lice are on the brink of extinction. So I I guess this proves that nothing is free. And I I couldn't make that up. I, I doubt I could make that up anyway. It's the truth in any case. In fact, according to... A report at inews.co.uk, I'll quote from that now. <clears throat> According to a scientific paper published in 2006 by two STI doctors in Leeds in the United Kingdom, pubic lice are on the road to extinction because so many people are having Brazilian waxes. When I read that, I just went... That could be a spoof, so to speak, but it's actually not because in the NIH Library of Medicine, the National Centre for Biotechnology Information, there is actually a paper in 2006 by doctors Armstrong and Wilson titled, Did the Brazilian Kill the Pubic Lice? And their conclusion is, in scientific lingo, yeah, it did. STIs, pubic lice, so... What other conclusion can be drawn from that? So thanks a lot, Brazil! (laughs) Anyway, back to the story du jour here. 
This vehicle is the JAC. Now, this is the brand, like Mazda or something. Well, not really like Mazda at all, but taxonomy-wise, JAC is the brand. And the vehicle is called the EJS1, E-JS1, which confusingly enough is also known as the E10X or the E-S1 or just the S1, depending on where you are around the place. Anyway, it's a poxy little electric shitbox, kind of um, the people's death trap, I guess you could call it. It's the first EV that was ever tested by Latin NCAP, and it certainly is remarkable. So let's remark on all of that now, shall we? JAC for dummies. I don't even know if you call it Jack, but anyway, JAC for dummies. It's a Chinese brand. Latin America's ones are, in fact, manufactured in China, although I think they are assembled in Mexico. And for some time, Volkswagen owned half of JAC, but they dropped another 5.22 billion yuan, not, that, that's Y-U-A-N, not J-U-A-N, just for complete disambiguation, right? 5.22 billion yuan, which is about one and a bit billion Australian bucks or 750 million American dollars. So up its stake to 75% of JAC, and they did that back in 2020. And the plan is for 250,000 vehicles to be manufactured by 2025. Can't wait if this is the shape of things to come. Bring it, dudes. Jesus. Now, according to the manufacturer, JAC, the you know, Volkswagen sub-branded assholes, basically, this new JAC electric death trap is, quote, uh, the cheapest 100% electric car in Brazil. My first electric dog's dick. <laughs> yes. They go on, and I guess they have to, but perhaps they shouldn't. Developed in partnership with the Volkswagen Group. So they're playing that right up, aren't they? They're going all the way up. They're up to the elbow in the Volkswagen Group. Boldly to go where no man has gone before. The EJS1, they're quoting again here, right? This is a quote. The EJS1 operates in an absolutely unprecedented segment. As if unprecedented weren't already a fucking absolute. Like, it can't be partly unprecedented, can it? The urban compact matching the ideal application for a fully electric vehicle. Dog's dick. Two dog's dicks in the one web page. Yes. They must really, really mean it. Quote, and the best, it charges quickly, even with an AC charger. Like, dude, I want one. Except for the fact, of course, that it will kill you in crashes where you would otherwise walk away if you were in a slightly less shitboxy kind of conveyance, just say. So, how did it actually go? Let's talk about the high point, which is a relative term. 20% for pedestrian protection. That's the best it did in the four pillars of ANCAP testees. 7% for safety assistance, and I think it got that just for having seatbelt reminders, okay, because there's no friggin' ESC, and as for lane keeping assistance and blind spot warning and you know, advanced things of that nature, you can friggin' forget about it. Now, in North America, of course, there are regulations about having ESC in vehicles. Like, you can't sell a vehicle with ESC, but in Latin America, not the case. You can Essentially, if it's got wheels and a frame around it, you can pretty much sell it. So there's that. 7% for safety assistance. I think it's only got a seatbelt reminder for the driver, if I read that correctly. Don't quote me on that, but you can look at the report on Latin NCAP's webpage for it, and you can download it and check it out. I think it's only got like one seatbelt reminder, and that's for the driver. It hasn't got a speed limiter. It doesn't have any of that shit, okay? 6% for child occupant protection, which is uh, fairly shit, I'd have to say. And uh, 0%, big fat donut for adult occupant protection. So I'm not just editorialising when I call this thing a fucking death trap. It's disgraceful. 
Okay, it really is, because we're talking about human life here. We're talking about needless death, and even worse than death, because, like, dude, if you die in a car crash, your fucking problems are over, okay? They're just kicking off for everyone else in your life. I get that. But for you, they're over. The real problem with car crashes is living, right? Living afterwards, living in a state of hell on earth. Like if you break your femur in 32 fucking places in a high mechanism car crash because some assholes didn't design the structure properly, then after infinity surgeries and all of these reconstructive attempts, you could easily, and plenty of people are in this position, they suffer for two, two and a half years, whatever, with a leg that is cold and painful and for all practical intents and purposes useless. And medical science then says to these poor bastards, that's the best we can do. Uh, how about amputation as a therapeutic option? Now, this is straight, this description I've just given you is straight from a dude who was the trauma director of the busiest hospital in New South Wales. I was talking to him about brain injuries and things of this nature, and he said, I think you're really focusing on the quote-unquote glamour part of trauma here. He said the reality of trauma is exactly the leg scenario that I just gave to you. So at the end of this long, painful, and very confronting road, the final conversation is how about we chop it off to improve the calibre of the rest of your life. And that's the kind of thing that we're talking about here. Needless death and even worse, needless suffering that goes on without end afterwards, okay? So although I am going to be flippant in this report, the serious aspect of this is exactly what I just said to you because this is happening, it's the 21st fucking century and not too many people are waving a big flag and going, shouldn't be happening, right? This thing crashes worse than a 1965 fucking Corolla, and that is beyond the pale in the moral universe. It just is. It shouldn't happen today, and it does. This thing has only two airbags and no stability control. And let's not forget, stability control is the biggest safety advance of the past 50 years, like since the seatbelt, dude. Stability control has saved thousands of lives. And the great tragedy of this, of course, is that there's no real mechanism for <laughs> making a ledger of deaths that didn't happen, near misses and poles that weren't struck and, you know, head-on collisions that didn't happen. It, this ledger does not exist, right? So, essentially, you can download the video and I'll play some footage for you now. This shit heap just collapsed in the 64 kilometer an hour offset frontal crash test. It's disgraceful. What this basically means, and there is a very dry sort of voiceover description by the boss of Latin NCAP, and he has to be like this, but what he's essentially saying is that if the crash test dummy had been a human being, their aorta would have ruptured or their heart would have been torn apart by the collision. This condition is often called a cardiac tamponade and I've been in the operating theatre and seen some very skilled surgeons repair one of those on an 18-year-old young man who'd suffered exactly this kind of collision and uh, he's alive today because of medical science, you know. But it's not very much fun to succumb to that shit at the side of the road, and it's also really, really not fun for the parents, the wives, the brothers, the sisters, whatever else, you know. That's what we're talking about, okay? Just because this thing is badly designed. As for the kiddies in the car now, JAC slash Volkswagen, they didn't even bother responding to Latin end caps requests for advice or data or collaboration on things like isofix labelling of the kitty restraint anchor points and what sort of restraints the manufacturer would recommend, like rearward facing or front facing and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so they conducted this test and the score was shit for kids as well. And let's face it, if you're a parent, you care more about the safety of your kids in the car than you care about your own safety, right? You just do. The only time you care more about their safety is when they get their freaking license. So anyway, in the side impact test, it is hilarious indeed, very entertaining, I think you'd agree, to see the driver's dummy's head 
headbutt the B pillar because you just don't see that often enough anymore in crash test footage owing to the fact that nearly every car has a curtain and thorax airbag protection. So this is kind of what happens when you don't have that, right? Bonus hilarity now, and this really is confronting, like <coughs> EVs have, to deploy an airbag, there's a crash sensor. And if the crash sensor goes, yeah, deploy the airbags now because lives are on the line, then a bunch of other stuff happens, right? These com the computer sends other messages to the car. The, one of the messages is unlock the doors so that first responders who get to the vehicle, even members of the public, they can unlock the doors and help the injured if necessary. Pro tip, do not remove injured people from cars unless there's imminent danger. Sort of wait for the paramedics in an ideal world. Sometimes car might be on fire, you've got no choice, but Generally, injured persons should remain inside cars until the pros get there. But anyway, there's a signal. It says unlock the doors. In an EV, there's an isolation signal for the battery. That's what's supposed to happen. So you crash, and then the battery is supposed to be electrically isolated from the vehicle. Like all electrical systems turned off. So in the offset frontal crash test, that just didn't function. Okay, the whole car remained energised. And even more hilariously, this shitbox when it had the side impact test, okay, the computer recorded the isolation signal, but the car remained energised. So the battery fully connected in both cases. So well done, you incompetent assholes who were responsible for the design and construction of what can only be described as one of the least competent vehicle construction exercises in the 21st century. Even the whiplash protection was shit. Are you gonna look at what Volkswagen Australia and Volkswagen around the world had to say about safety, right? Because this is a Volkswagen product. They own 75% of this brand. It's kind of like Cupra or Say It. It's on the road to being a Volkswagen brand, like all of these other Volkswagen brands, okay? In Australia, on their website today, here's what Volkswagen says about safety, okay? Quote, safety first, safety always. At Volkswagen, we take your safety very seriously. Not just seriously, but very fucking seriously. That's why our cars go through car test after car test. Well, they're cars, dude. Like, what other kinds of tests would we put them through? We're not going to put them, well, I suppose we could put them through a moose test. But they're just tests, aren't they? So, quote, they're more than ready to offer you maximum protection. Except in Latin America where they don't give a fuck. The Volkswagen Group now. This is a statement from October the 28th of 2019, so fairly recent. And it's by Dr. Johan... <laughs> Neft. I hope I didn't mangle that too badly, but he's the head of vehicle body development for Volkswagen. He says, quote, road safety forms the core of Volkswagen's commitment to its customers. As a high volume manufacturer, we aim to be a pioneer <laughs> in this space, except in Latin America where, you know. It is always hilarious to see this sort of variable value that multinational companies, in particular car makers, convey to the value of a human life in various places around the world. And I'd suggest if, if this had happened in Germany or America or even here in Schittsville, there would be a flat-out scandal about it, would there not? But in Latin America, I'm kind of hearing crickets. I'm, I'm sort of hearing crickets in relation to its amplification around the world, right? And maybe that needs to change because all of these companies, like the Volkswagen Group, you think about this monolith in Wolfsburg and all the different departments, they would have a seat on the board dedicated to concepts like equality and inclusiveness and things of that nature. And I'd suggest that... That is just a smokescreen. In fact, there's, there's a great deal of fake zeal in the corporate world about that, is there not? They have whole departments and teams and endless PDFs with protocols and processes and policies about equality and inclusiveness. Like, dude, 
if you are the kind of person who decides to identify as the Sydney Harbour fucking bridge, or a toucan, then there will be a policy in a multinational like Volkswagen to support you. It just will there be a team? Like, you should not have to suffer the indignity of any longer going to the human toilet. They will construct a toucan toilet close to your workstation so that you can be included by this toilet segregation in the workplace, right? And I'm only just being a little facetious about that because if we think about the true meaning of the word equality, right, and we think where the front line of this battle must be, it is certainly not for humans who decide to identify themselves as toucans or whatever. And I'm not having a shot at you if you are gender dysphoric, okay? Like that's got to be enough of a challenge and you deserve not to be ridiculed in this way. What I'm doing is I'm trying to point out that in the corporate landscape, they say one thing about equality, but on the front line where, you know, if there were the Ten Commandments of equality, there would have to be, commandment number one would be, that the value of every human life is the same. Would it not? And yet, car makers in particular, like Volkswagen, but other car makers as well, they treat the value of a human life as on something of a sliding scale, depending on two things. What is the regulatory environment where you've got to sell the car and what can we fucking well get away with? You can sell a car in Latin America without stability control, without side airbags, without this, without that. Okay, so yeah, they can get away with it. And what about the hue and cry from the population and corporations and things of that nature? The vehicle users, well, you don't get so much of that because as a market, they haven't matured enough in these areas to really call for that stuff. So in Australia, for example, we have a fairly lax regulatory environment. You can sell a zero-star car in Australia, but the only problem is that people won't buy it because of the hue and cry about that kind of conduct, right? So they need two things in Latin America. They need stricter regulations and they need to arc up more about safety deficiencies in vehicles and they're just not doing that until then like companies like Volkswagen will just continue to get away with whatever they think they can get away with and the bottom line here is if you don't include these modules in the car even if the car is engineered for it right you've got two curtain airbags you've got two thorax airbags for the front you've got all of these different systems stability control and blind spot warning and lane keep assist and I don't know, if you can save $100 on 250,000 cars, then you can sit in a board meeting and go, you know what, we saved $25 million in Latin America. Haven't we done a good job? Except for being inhuman, immoral assholes. So there's kind of that issue to deal with. And just for complete transparency, there were three vehicles that were detailed in 2022's last round of test results by Latin NCAP. And the other two vehicles were the Kia Sportage and the Mitsubishi Outlander. The Outlander, of course, is five stars here, and so is the Sportage. Now, over there, different protocols. So five stars here is not the same as five stars over there. In fact, five stars here is arguably better than five stars there, although their protocols are more in line with their uh, trauma, right? There's a lot more trauma of pedestrians, for example, in Latin America, and that is represented greater in the overall scoring than it is here because pedestrians don't get struck as much on the roads in Europe and Australia, for example. That's from uh, Latin NCAP's website. So, Outlander, five stars here, five stars there. So Mitsubishi hasn't stripped Outlander out at all. This is essentially the same vehicle. They're just selling it in Latin America, fully loaded and very safe. Kia Sportage, five stars here, three stars there. The interesting thing about Sportage is, of course, that it is a clone of the Hyundai Tucson. And the Tucson has only two front airbags in Latin America. And it's engineered for five stars, right? So it's got all the shit engineered. It's engineered for all the shit. And yet they sell the Tucson there without even curtains or thorax protection on the side. So Kia sort of responded to uh, pressure, I guess you'd say, in Latin America to put that shit in the Sportage. So they put the 
thorax protection and the head protecting curtains in Sportage, and therefore it was eligible for the pole test, and it crashed really well, as you'd expect, because the platform is designed to crash really well. And they put this additional protection guff inside the platform. The crash performance was actually really good. Now, Latin NCAP doesn't actually publish the criteria, the thresholds, for uh, the different levels 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0 stars. And if they do, they hide it really, really well on their website because I couldn't find it. Anyway, it's a mystery to me why it only achieved three stars over there. But it is kind of interesting for me to see. When you look at all of the uh, scores on, Euro, on Latin NCAP's website, you see a whole bunch of cars here that go really well that actually rated really poorly over there so there's a lot of car makers actually just stripping safety equipment out of their vehicles for sale in markets like Latin America and you might want a new car for any number of reasons I guess you might want to you might want a new Tucson for example to convey your jar of dead fucking pubic lice to the cemetery for a dignified burial Right? And it just seems a shame to me. You can do that very safely here in Australia. It just seems a shame to me that the whole process, if you do it in the home of the freaking Brazilian, is a whole lot less safe. And apparently, everyone's doing it. And I'd suggest respectfully that that's got to stop.